Oh yeah. All right. I have her. So Ziffer, you go to jump, and when you jump, your foot slips, and you fall right onto the tiles oh, because of a, a bad, a bad uh, footing position, and you spring the trap because you you pretty much fell through the uh, fell through the floor. Bam. Oh, oh, that looks unpleasant. So yeah, let's let's go ahead and Oh my god. <laughs> let, let's roll some damage for you. A bunch of saw blades come out and just spin a couple times. Ring! The meat grinder. Let's do some damage. Let's, first off, I want you to do a a dexterity saving throw to see if you can actually kind of do a backflip or something. So if if you have dexterity, go ahead and well if you have acrobatics, I don't know. That'll happen. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well I mean you can you can oh. do that. Hey, there you go. Looks like he was carrying oh, it. Wow. Was lucky so, okay. Yeah, so just as so just because I wanted I want to give the players a benefit of the doubt. You know, with a with a dexterity saving throw, you could add your acrobatics. You didn't even need to. You rolled a crit, you're able to do a, a backflip on the other side of the pit. That's just before, just as the, as the floor was caving in, you were actually able to spring off of the floor as it was caving in, and you, you actually did an acrobatic tumble on the other side. It's actually kind of funny because it fell because he caught his foot on it, and then he just <laughs> yeah. jumps right off. Yep. Well, see, when he when he jumped into the when he tried to jump over the pit, he slipped, and then he pretty much landed in the middle of the pit. And as he landed, he used his dexterity to basically make the tumble and land on the other side of the pit, so not in the I'm not into killing level one guys. Man. I'm going to wanna throw this rope? Not like <laughs> yeah, this. I'm going to throw the rope over. Alright. So you could you could probably use a you know, like I was saying, when you guys first entered the 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 stronghold here, there are the sconces on the wall. So you could probably use the sconce to your advantage and use it as sort of like a uh like a, I guess you would probably use it as like a pivot point to where you could kind of lasso it around a few times and then swing sideways. So yeah, you want, because I mean, literally, if somebody's holding onto a rope on the other side, jumping's really not going to help. But but there are, you know, every five ten feet, there are those sconces that are that are lining the the upper part of the wall. I'll do that, and then I'm going to lean back hard onto the rope to make sure the sconce can hold my weight. Sure, seems like it can. You jump, you know, you jump a couple times. It doesn't doesn't seem like it's going to give or anything. Okay, I'll go ahead and try to, like, you know, work my way across with the rope then. All right. Go ahead and give me a, uh, seeing that you're using a rope, go ahead and use a athletics check. Looking for just a, a base check, and I'm giving you a bonus as well, so do it with advantage because you have the rope, so... For who? Are we jumping across yet, or is he putting the rope up? Well, he's yeah. using the rope to get across. So. Yeah. Oh, my bad. Across. I thought it was someone already across throwing the rope back. Nah, Why didn't we send the one with the rope first? <laughs> just, yeah, I mean, you, you basically use the, the rope to your advantage, so... Which is a good trick, using the rope. You know, plus you had the sconces up on the wall, and... So, I mean, why not, why not let you guys use those? You make it across the pit, though. Cool. Thank you very much, uh, Krenz, for the follow. The other two yeah, I've been there. streaming D&D for 11 months. 11 months, man. Never had any problems at all streaming it. Jack Herrer, thank you very much for the follow. So what do well. we roll to get it? You roll a d20 plus your... Uh, go ahead and use Strength. And also do it with advantage. Strength, and if you have athletics, you can add athletics proficiency in as well. Oh, I I messed up. That should only be a 14 because I was using acrobatics. All right, That's so okay. I hit, the, the do I hit advantage or do I? So. Yeah, hit, do the I advantage hit advantage macro. Yeah, hit the right. advantage macro. And then add in your, your strength bonus. And if you have uh, proficiency in athletics, you can add that in as well. And then we'll take the higher of the rolls, and you got higher than a 10, so you're fine. You're able to swing across as well with no problems. Woo! Now, Rustic, you're Woo! the caboose. You're the last one, buddy. Um, so I just take my 6 in athletics and then my 
Um, four in strength? No, not four. Nope. Just total six because of the athletics. Oh, okay. So, so just... you would do uh, hit the advantage and then add the uh, six. Uh oh, I think you my barely <laughs> made it. <laughs> That was so nice, man. yeah, as you as you use it and you know kick off of the wall, you start to you know move your arms and you're waving your arms and then the bard actually grabs you by the collar and says, "Whoa, easy there, big fella," <laughs> because you're like six foot eight. You know, you're like the you know it's like uh, when Kadojo rolled that, you're like the Dolph Lundgren of uh, of Dragonborn. You even have like an an eighteen looks as well. So, <laughs> so yeah, there there will be all new characters and and thanks. Uh, Thanks to the Friday game for letting me use those characters just for the one shot today. They're not you guys aren't using their they this is a whole you're not even in their game. They're in another game. I just basically copied the campaign. Now that I have everything uploaded into one campaign universally, now I can branch off and start making my other campaigns. <sighs> Thankfully this process is over. Ugh <laughs> Guys, you guys don't even know how long it took to put all those 1,200 handouts in here. It was oh man! Oh, and the that must spells. Have been ridiculous. It was insane. It was pretty much no sleep, and but I'll tell you what, Warhuck helped a lot, and I and I thank Warhuck so much for that. He, he I'd still be doing that probably. Why? Well, I, I'd probably just be finishing it if I, if he didn't help me. But yeah, it was it was nice to have that help. That's that's crazy. All right, so there you go. Uh, that's uh, pretty much. You guys were all across the pit. No big, uh, no big deal. Now, as you as you get around, as you start to, you know, get close to the the corner there, you can actually hear more more bickering, and and you can also hear a <sighs> sort of like a real heavy breath as well. Oh, the, this yeah, is as you as dragon. you get to the corner. Alright, uh... I'm gonna leave my rope tied up to that sconce, just in case we have to retreat. Oh, that'd be pretty clever. Make them all fall in the pit. That'd be awesome. Good move, <laughs> good move. Uh, uh, so are we going to try and sneak around? Are you going to try and see what they are again? It's worked so far, or... Yeah, I'll give it a try. Alright. Um, yeah, let the rug do it somewhere in bells, evidently. <laughs> Oh. Nice. Yes, you're using the shadows to your advantage, and as you peer around the corner, you can see the head of a slumbering dragon, a slumbering white dragon, with his eyes closed. And as he's breathing, you can see that there is sort of like a very cold mist coming out of its nostrils and mouth. And you can see other kobolds as well, just like all of the others that you've encountered this day. And they are basically worshipping the dragon. But this dragon is no statue, because you can see this thing moving. Yep, we got a dragon, guys. <laughs> and the, uh, that, the head of this great. dragon is as big as a kobold. Oh, okay. I mean... <laughs> okay, so it's relatively small. All in head side. I thought they were more impressive. Well, not all dragons are super impressive. Thought this was going to be a challenge. What if we uh, try and make him chase us and then put him in the meat grinder? Because it'd be fun. Oh, but he'd freeze his way out, wouldn't he? That's not fun. No pun intended, chain plays. Considering we almost lost to a bunch of kobolds, I'm not sure I want to go in and just slash. <sighs> You're this thing breathing pretty heavily now. Well, we can try and do the uh, the pull again, where I uh, shoot one and try and bring all the others. Do you think it'd work for the dragon tail, or are we going to try and take out the kobolds while leaving the dragon asleep? It's interesting to see I, what they do. Does anyone know the dragon's breath pattern? Because uh, if we pull the dragon and we're all in a cluster, that may be a bad idea. 
Yeah, I would prefer right. that we fight the dragon where it is. That way we have cover around this corner from its breath weapon, if need be. Thanks again, Jack Hair, Krenz, right. uh, if, we, if, we, if we pull it and follow. it comes, we really have no place but across that pit to go. But yeah, Larthian, I've I've been streaming D and D five for. How much hours. is this a pause? Well, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sure. I'll, uh, seeing that you're there and the corner isn't like 100 percent in the way. Uh, I'll let you. I'll sure. I'll let you throw a javelin in there. Oh yeah. yeah. This is gonna be good, guys. How much force is the thunder wave? I'm asking more because if there was rubble and stuff before from things, then it, it can't, the support can't be too strong. So even a partial, like fall. It says, it says it does 2d8 damage, and it does a burst or a blast, and it also knocks loose free-hanging things and stuff, but how much force is it? Uh, you, you would have to... It, it's forceful, but you would just have to see, you know what I mean, how, how the the dungeon would... The ar architecture would actually, you know, hold up to, to a thunderous sweep like that. Yeah, because I'm... Uh, uh, that's rough. 15 foot <laughs> cube. Originating from you. Okay. How high is the ceiling? Uh, the ceiling's about 25 foot tall. 20, 25 foot tall. Oh, so that's not good enough. I wanted something that would. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> if someone wants to take the first hit at the dragon, I can use um, my bardic inspiration to give you an extra d6. If I sneak attack that dragon, if I attack that dragon with a bow just by popping around the corner, uh, I get the d6 for uh, sneak attack plus the d6 uh, plus plus a possibly your d6. Is that for damage? I think it says attack roll, actually. That's gotcha. no good. <laughs> Creature yeah. gains one bardic inspiration, die a d6. Minutes, they can roll the die and add the number to an ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Um, this will be good, guys. If these kobolds are so hostile, I don't think talking to the dragon is going to work. I mean, uh, and besides that, it took out all the other parties that came here before. We can assume. I mean, oh, they might have just fallen into the trap. We don't know. <laughs> well, there is quite a bit of blood in the trap. I wonder if that's what happened in the jester. <laughs> yeah, there's there's two corpses on there and a jester. <laughs> <laughs> that's sad. Well, uh, that attack roll is worse. Dragons in 5th so. edition, guys, you know what, what if I are ferocious. Run in, I'm hoping you all can give me some sort of support. What if I run in and use my shock burst? It's 2d6 and it's a big burst. It'll wake them up, but... Are the kobolds clustered together, or are they all spread out in a room? They're somewhat clustered. Uh, I can see from where I'm at a total of five uh, in the hand of another one. So they're kind of clustered in a... Um, you got the dragon's this head, and then said. you have three right next to it. There's a dragon's head. Uh, and then, and then you then have uh, three more that are uh, about two squares away. I'm not sure how I feel about a noble sacrifice. <laughs> Guys, if I run this right here, and that. then Plan this if out. I run this right into so the middle of the kobolds, funny. use a blast, and then it doesn't kill the kobolds, there is no way I am getting out of there. <laughs> this, is, this is good. Instead of a death. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh. Yeah, I think of something. I'm going to drink a potion of healing while they're waiting. I can put all them right. all to I sleep. I can get to the dragon's <laughs> head. You're, you're back up at max hit points. Roll t well, I'm sure you probably would. Roll 2d4 plus uh, 2. Well, I'm only down 4, so it, it would have maxed me, yeah. Yeah, it would have maxed you. It, I can put them all to sleep. Do you think we can sneak by the dragon? If, if our goal is the horde, then or maybe we could just take it. Sleep would be <laughs> sleep would sleep would probably uh, do pretty good for you actually. Um, I'd uh. like to drink a healing potion as well. Okay. 
What do I do for that? Two D four. How many hit points are you down? I have ten right now. Uh, so you're five down. Go ahead and do a two D four plus two. I think I'll put him to sleep. <laughs> I think I'll use a sleep spell. Maybe pasta. And then after Maybe. that, Maybe. have the rogue go and check out the rest of the situation so we can yeah, get, you're better, back up to get a better hang of it. Wow, very nice roll. Yeah, you're oh, that's 16, right? Yeah, you're, you're back up to full. So you're, fi yeah, 15 or whatever you have. 15, 16? I think it was 15. Right there. Well, let's get this rolling. Go ahead right, and well, I'm gonna catch sleep. Yep, alright, let me... Oh, never mind. This. My hit points are 12. <laughs> Alright, so go ahead and give me a, a, a stealth check, please. As you peer around the corner, Mr. Bard. Give me a dexterity check, and if you have stealth, you can add that proficiency as well. So, whatever's in the stealth box. Alright, my awesome stealth of two. And what? I'm going to do the perception roll for the... Uh... Heck yeah! <laughs> Oh, nice. Okay, I'm going to do a perception roll for uh, the dragon real quick. So the dragon is plus 11 to perception, so we'll see. We're, we're basically doing a contest to see if the, the dragon notices you compared to the kobolds. So, right. yeah. The, oh, you would, you freaking dragon. The, the dragon notices you. Uh, and as is. you, as you're like, because the, the kobolds, they don't recognize you, but you're kind of like tiptoeing around the corner, and all of a sudden, you hear the eyes open. You can hear them go, like shingles. You can hear, and the eyes look at you, and the, you know, the, the iris of the eye sort of like focuses in on you, like on Lord of the Rings, you know, the, yeah. the, the eye on the tower. And all of a sudden, he opens his mouth and he says, why are you in my lair? Uh. <laughs> do, do you come for my riches? Do you think you're going to kill me? And he kind of he kind of moves a, a little bit, squashes a couple of the squashes a couple of the the kobolds, and this has all happened simultaneously. Is uh, I'm going to kill a couple of these kobolds off. A couple also move out of the way, and he just basically steps right on them. Uh, the other ones kind of move, and there you go. He is a uh, a huge dragon. I got an idea. I got he's an idea. Definitely, <laughs> and his neck comes right down on you, and he's staring you almost point blank in the face, and you can right. feel the coldness of his breath as he is breathing. Oh man, I, I think I I think I got an I idea. I hope this works. No, no, no. Toss the javelin at him. Please. Um, can I go down on one knee and say I wish to uh, Oh, um, getting difficult. Like sort of join you. Like I'm I'd assume the dragon sort of has you. rain. Yeah, the dragon has rain over the kobolds. And since a dragonborn's not good enough to be a dragon, sort of like a serve or tutor or something like that, I'm not sure how I'd say it. I'm not sure about dragonborn. But could I try and do a um, persuasion check? And that'd be pretty hard. Or maybe that'd be a performance since I'm hamming it up. Y y Hands <laughs> thrown in the air. <laughs> oh, please, <laughs> dragonborn. You can, you can give me a, a, a persuade. Now, now, what are you doing talking to the dragon? I mean, I, I would like to hear what you're, what you're saying huh. to, to the dragon as well. Well, right now I'm trying not to immediately die. <laughs> Let me think this over a little bit. I don't want to rush out and attack him. Um, Guys, this is an adult white dragon. For the most part, I'm trying to bide time. This is a because challenge level else, 13. Two kobolds. <laughs> challenge and level 13 dragon. I feel like I'm trying to buy time for my allies to come up with a better plan. Not Come a on, chance guys. This, you. this party has. And you can also see that the 
uh, the, the kobolds are kind of squirming around trying to, uh, one's trapped under the tail. He's not dead or anything, but you, it, you can see oh, well, him squirming hurt. around. <laughs> is it a silver dragon? It, it is a white dragon. And yeah. now, everybody in the hall, you can start to feel a cold presence from the dragon. And, and especially the war nerve, you can see this going on. You can also see the, the head a little bit there, uh, rack. But, uh, Carthine, you can, you can hear the breathing, of it, that's for sure. And plus you heard the deep, the very bellowous tone of the dragon as well as it kind of echoed throughout the hallway. I asked, do I have any resistance to cold because I can do cold breath? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually you do. Yeah, you do have resistance to cold. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so wh how how are you uh, how are you role playing this out with the dragon, Slars? All right. And you're going to do a persuasion check, which is going to be basically a contest against the insight of the dragon, because the dragon is going to want to know if you're uh, trying to deceive him or her or not. So so what are you telling the dragon? Um, well, spending you're spending all of your time sleeping. I am a bard that has traveled the world and I'm growing weary of my travels and I feel shame at not being like a true dragonborn. I mean, my strength is 10. Jesus. Um, <laughs> I feel shame at not being a big, tough dragonborn. And I want to embrace the power of the dragon. And I've heard of his horde from far, far away. People, the kobolds speak of it. And there are rumors everywhere. And I'm not there to steal it, but to learn from them. Oh, this is, this is, yeah. this is awesome. <laughs> Go ahead and give me a... Give me a persuasion check. All please. right. If I ever needed a critical, it is now. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny, especially when you were uh, saying, I've only got a 10 strength. And he's, his eyes just kind of like did the, you know how the rock and wrestling, I haven't watched wrestling in years, but the rock used to do the, the people's eyebrow or something like that. He's kind of giving you the people's eyebrow, like what in the hell are you talking about? A strength 10 and everything else and then he does he does kind of look down to you and he and he pulls his head up a little bit closer to you and he takes a breath and you can actually you kind of move a little bit closer to him because of the amount of air that he intakes and then he exhales and you can feel the frost starting to accumulate on your face and he says what do you speak of you're nothing but a failed dragon that never hatched Ow, rude. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly why I come to you. Thanks, Catfish. Oh, by the way, this is something... Uh, what are they doing? I mean, come on. They gotta be doing something. They're not. J they're just standing there watching. Thanks, Tazers, guys. Thank you for the phone. You got my back. <laughs> Thanks, I'm back Taz. I'm square and I'm holding the rope in my hand. <laughs> oh, okay. That, that, that's very nice of you. Glad to see you'll jump and leave the rope. <laughs> All right, Slar. So go All ahead right. and uh, go ahead and um, give me a uh, give me a persuasion check. All right. Okay. It's gonna be a critical failure. You come on. Like, you just like cough in his face. That is very disappointing. <laughs> Jocker19, thank you for the fall as well, Jocker. His bonus will probably guarantee him a success. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do a... <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, insight roll, which is based off of intelligence. Huh? You're lucky he doesn't have insight, so... Oh, well, wait, does he? No. No. <laughs> no. Well. Stupid dragon. Wow. Wow. Ah, son of a biscuit. <laughs> so he sees through my lie? So He's not just going to attack, right? <laughs> he tells you, he goes, You are testing my patience. Oh. Oh. You Let's have see. your audience. What do you want? Why are you here? Obviously you have killed my kobolds, my, my precious little kobold minions. Like what do you want Whoops. from me? <laughs> 
His precious cobalt that he killed himself. <laughs> and he starts to take a deep breath, and he's waiting for your answer. Oh man, I gotta think this through. Ask him why. Uh, he, well, he just killed some of his own cobalts. Ah, uh, that's a good point. Hmm. Oh, Maybe now know? would be the time to shoot fire into his mouth. Pull a Godzilla. <laughs> what I want to know. Is it at all possible to seal his mouth with yeah, a javelin? A you can throw a javelin in his mouth. I mean, his he's definitely rearing back a little bit, and he's intaking a lot of air. And it looks okay. like his neck, well, his neck is starting to go back. Well... Let's see. YOLO? Um, I'm, I'm, think, I'm thinking I don't want to uh, try and... It's supposed to end like this. It's a, a one shot. Please don't hurt me because they seem like they like power. So, All right, so light you through the javelin. <laughs> oh, thanks, bro. <laughs> Glad you got me. <laughs> uh, actually, you hit with a 20. You hit, so go ahead and, go ahead and roll damage with the javelin. The adult white dragon only has an 18 armor. But he's immune to uh, cold. He doesn't have any other kind of... Uh, oh, amazing. You did uh, three damage? Okay. God. So you, 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 throw the, you throw the javelin. It sticks into one of the, the scales on his cheek. And then he snaps his head over towards you. Roll initiative. Can I join the dragon's side? <laughs> <laughs> this is not good, yes. Did you say the Chester were still there? Nice. Yeah, he's in the pit. Mm -hmm. So what is the movement of this? Did I roll? Yeah, I did. Oh, 80, cool, 19. 80 feet flying. Oh, good. It wow. says you attempted to use a roll command looking for the value of a selected token. You have to click no on your token. You have to click on your token oh. there, Slapshot. Come on, <laughs> Rustic. Gosh, leave me alone. <laughs> Woo, six! Alright. So let's open up the turn tracker. Slars, you get a 19. Oh, sweet. You are you are face Buckets to face on my side. <laughs> with this dragon. Um, if I remember correctly, I am the support. This is not my job. I will r one, two, three, four, five. All right. So remember, when you move away from a target, especially from a target that has a reach of ten feet, you are going to take an attack of opportunity. So remember, remember, like I was saying, if you run away from something's reach, you take an attack of opportunity. That's pretty much been in the last three editions of D&D. But if you've never played, no big deal. You can put your token back because you, nobody's, you guys haven't done this yet. So, all right. There's, so there's no, a, no, no chicken shitting away. Well, no, Damn. no, you can't. <laughs> Hold on, hear me out. You can do. There's an action which is in the. You can click on the the player's handbook here. Just real quick, I'll I'll show you guys this. Now I'm looking at the Alright, Slars, I'm looking at your character sheet. Go to the player's handbook. 